So in this week's Pasha, we learn about Korach. Korach who went against Moses, thereby going against Hashem. We learn that Korach, he gets a hara. Moses, he gets a tov. The reason for this is because Moses is getting his advice from Hashem. Everything that he learns and gets is from Hashem. Korach chooses to challenge Moses. Therefore, challenging Hashem. Korach brings 250 people, men, women, and children to the death by doing one thing, one act. He goes in front of Moses, in front of the entire people of Israel, and says, this garment is made complete, completely of tequilas, the blue string. But there's still a need to sit this on the corner of the garment. Moses says yes. The Yetzir Horror always brings a logical question. Always has something logical to say. That makes you think and wonder and challenge what you're doing makes you question if you're doing the right thing or not. Should you be doing this or should you be doing that? That's what the Yetzir Horror does to you. It makes you think that you're doing wrong when you're actually doing right. The story brought down by Rabbi Brody in his book Acidic Pearls. I'm not going to quote it perfectly here, but you get the idea of it. This is person, Asher Lemel, who was born and raised in the Ukrainian parody, in a small shetel, small shetel. He's never been to the big cities of Ukraine or Russia. He's never been outside of his shetel. But he has a dream of going to Odessa, to the Black Sea and seeing the coast, tasting a freshly grilled fish. Snuggling the breeze in the ocean scent. He works his fingers to the bone, saving Kovac after Kovac until finally reaches a hundred rubles and he can set out on his journey. He takes a wagon from his town to Vinitsa. From there, he's going to board a train to Odessa and live his dream of seeing the surf in the sand. All the train tracks in Vinitsa, poor Asher is confused. He has no idea what's going on. It's so different than his small shetel. He asked the ticket taker, which train is it to Odessa? The ticket taker says, here, read this paper and stop holding up the line. Asher pays for his ticket, reads the paper, whatever Russian he knows, just not much. He knows day to day jargon to get by with his non Jewish neighbors and the alphabet. These semi inebriated noblemen of Russian descent, they see him and they want to, get, they want to make fun of him and have a laugh at his, at his expense. They go up to the Jew and says, Do you need help? How can we help you? Asher says, Does the east, does the east train track take you to Odessa? The nobleman says to him, Silly Jew, Odessa is, big, is dead south of here. Why would a train track that goes east take you to the south, Odessa. You want to board on the south train tracks. Asher is sure that he read right and the paper says that he should board on the east train tracks. But he's thrown off, he's confused. He's not sure who to believe, the paper or the guy telling him what's, that he should board to that south side. Certainly a train board pulls off on the south side train tracks. The conductor says, 
Four fast. You know, the old man says to Asher, what are you waiting for? Board, get on. Asher doesn't know what to do. He boards the train. After hours and hours of the train chugging along, 24 hours later, on a trip to Asher taking eight hours to Odessa, the conductor comes through the train and says, give me your tickets or pay. Asher hands him his ticket and says, when do we get to Odessa? The, uh, the conductor says to him, do it! This train is heading to Siberia. It's heading east. You should have borne the east train tracks. The train tracks do not necessarily tell you which way the train is going. Instead of enjoying a surf in the sand and the beautiful sunsets of Odessa and the Black Sea, Asher will be enjoying the cold frozen tundra of Siberia. What we can learn from this is that we should always trust our instincts. Trust the paper, the Torah, and not the person, Korach. If we follow the paper and the Torah, we will be there on the right path. We will lead a life of good. We will have the Yates of Tov on our side. Hashem, constantly in our presence. If we follow the person, we follow Korach, we welcome the Yates of Yates of Har. We see in our days that people have gone away from Judaism. If you go back to Germany and the Enlightenment movement, which then gave way to the Reform movement in Judaism, people said that we don't have to follow all these laws to be Jewish. We want to be Jewish and blend in to hurt those around us. You can't do that. You can't give up say, I'm going to do this and not this. You cannot forsake some of the laws that Shem brought down to us and say that I don't need to do them. That I can be a Jew without them. You can't. You will eventually go away. And I've seen it time and time again. People who were raised in this movement, in this way, without much care, much knowledge, they lose who they are as a Jew. They end up marrying non-Jews and worse. Become convert to, Jew, to Christianity or Islam. They go away from the Torah. And they leave the people behind. Rabbi Nachman brings down and Lukutir Maharaj that you should tie your learning into a bracha. So I bracha to you is that you will constantly follow the Torah. The written paper that Mo Moses brought down to us from Mount Sinai. And you will follow Shem and everything he said to do. And you will live a life of good without any anger, any violence in your life. And that you would not go the way of Korach, challenging God and separating yourself from the community. Have a beautiful Shabbos, beautiful weekend, and I'll see you next week, Shabbos.